you don't know the like the size of the waves that you're catching when you do it as well. So I was like, oh, like, was it that big, you know? And then like um, one of my friends who was filming out there that day sent me a screen grab and I like messaged it to me and I saw it when my um, friend was driving me to the airport that night and he sent it to me. He's like, here's a couple from today. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> you see you, guy. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, and then I forwarded it to JJ and he was like, Oh my god! Oh, so he didn't like, go out with you? No, no, he he didn't come over. He just like oh. fully bombed the swell by myself. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was really funny. I just you could until you see photos and footage from the day, and it was like that at Jaws too. Like, yeah, you don't really realize how big it is when you're on the wave. I don't yeah. reckon. Like until you're getting smoked. Like this year, I went over the falls at Jaws. Like, oh my god, just like not the situation you want to be in. You get stuck in a mud hole. Uh, about 400 kilometres northwest of uh, of Ayers Rock. It looked like, you know, I walked through 50 metres of water and it was this deep and I was like, fuck, that's easy. All right. So for the first 50 metres I got through, but then other trucks had gone before me before that and I couldn't see that. And so I got you're bogged. in a car? Yeah, in my yeah. car, in the, in the Forby. Boom, bogged right down to the fucking axles and all the rest of it. 17 days it took me to get out of that. <laughs> fucking hell. 17 days. You get pretty stressed because you're like, fucking hell, how am I going to get out of this? So then you just sit there and you analyze it. All right, the car's not sinking. It's all good. Stationary. All right, now what am I going to do? So you think to yourself, all right, well, let's, you know, first four hours, I was just going at it, going at it, going at it. And I was thinking to myself, fuck, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm yeah, not going to, I'm going to be cooked. I'm not even going to get through this thing. So, so then I made a plan for myself. I'm like, all right, today I'm going to get through nine meters i got a hundred meters to go through i'm gonna get 10 meters a day if i do a little bit extra one day because i get a bit more energy i'll do a bit more so i'm pulling mud putting the bloody tracks underneath moving pulling mud doing tracks doing all the rest of it putting all the things down set myself up camp every day 10 meters ahead knowing that i had to get to that spot every day and that's what i did so i was thinking to myself all right well i'll be out of here in no time this will be all right but then in there in the first eight hours of you doing it because you're just racing because you're thinking but then at the end of the day I was like fuck I've got water I've got food yeah, what's I can fucking hunt what's the rush Yeah, I've got no phone who gives a shit like what am I going to do here I mean, even if I get a meter a day for the next 30 days I've got 230 litres of water and it's not the hardest thing you've ever done in your life right. so relatively speaking you're just going fuck yeah. just do it for 100% it's, it's a high and it's addicting and I think that's you know you look at it happens all the time but uh it's just unfortunate it doesn't last you know but it's it's such a rush to work, work through something and have so much pressure on yourself and put yourself you know you feel kind of weak and and and, and, bit, and doubting doubtful but then you you have the courage and you push you work hard and and you know it's, it's like the old saying you work hard and, and you get your reward so you got to go be willing to go above and beyond and give it everything you've got to be ready for when that moment comes to be able to be in the right frame of mind to be able to perform and um and there's a certain amount of luck to it when you're working, you're talking about, you know, things not breaking that are out of your control and stuff like that. But that all comes down to dotting your I's, crossing your T's, having the right mechanic, making the right choices, you know, keeping your maintenance schedule up, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, whether packing a shoot, it's packing your shoot the right way or, or whatever. There's always some kind of, um, there's, there's always many, many dimensions to what what brings success. But, you know, even watching the Olympics recently and, you know, Sean White getting his gold medal is... Uh, it was cool just to see, I know, like, he's had a lot of doubt, you know, and, and obviously he's one of the greatest of all time on skateboard and, and, and as a snowboard. And, um, and just just to see the, the you, I could just feel, like, how good it must have felt to him to get his gold. You know, it was pretty It would have been almost like a relief as opposed to, like, a victory in a yeah. way, wouldn't you think? For sure. I mean, you, just to overcome that storm and then it just depends what you focus on. You either give a shit about what people think about or not, but I guess in that situation you do care because you, he's probably doing it for himself, but a lot of it would be a lot of what drives him through those hard times when, when the you know, because obviously when you watch on TV and he has a high run, you think, oh, wow, that, he just did that easy, but you don't see the pain yeah, that he's been through. Back, yeah, yeah. And, and so we all go through that, but uh, but you've got to have those motivators that drive you when... when uh, when most people will quit you have to be willing to keep pushing no matter what you face with and and not losing your cool and 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 whatever and finding out what and but it's all i guess you can't just do it for the high you have to do it for that's what i mean there's got to be something the personal growth side side. of it i think it's the personal growth and i guess at the end of it it kind of brings a little bit of wisdom but for me i've been through it a lot obviously and i know that uh what what i get out of it is that i'm happy now for the more of a chill life 
it's the 71st minute and it's 12 all and you're coming off your own line your lungs are hurting everything's aching um you just want to look around and think well he'll take the run and he'll do that but you don't you take it upon yourself and and you know you, you 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 charge the ball forward you do what you can do as as hard as you can and there just might be at some stage half a sniff half a gap half a quicker play of the ball than normal and then those guys that get all the headlines or 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 the like they'll spring that's when they step they'll spring to life and they'll do what they do but um generally it's it's off the back of you know some pretty hard work or, or a special play from someone um you know and it's individually in, in a 17 man environment everyone knows that but um you know if you're just a punter watching the tv you only see the end result um but yeah it, it's it's it, it, as i said it can't be coached it can't be it just comes within it and it's off and you're playing on that passion by that stage you're yeah, playing it's all you got left no there's nothing left yeah. yeah so so pretty much as you can see there i look like i'm in a um world of fun i look like i was uh oh. having a great old time and um, holding some stranger's hand, um, pretty much, yeah, just trying to get comfortable and get sorted. And that is actually like the first photo I've kind of seen anything of me um, being at that event um, crash. I, I don't remember none of that, um, which is kind of good sometimes. Yeah. yeah I've landed fair on my head. And um, uh, as I say, like I don't remember anywhere in there. I don't remember a helicopter ride. I don't remember being in a plane. Um, I vaguely remember starting to come around as they were kind of just loading me into a um, into a meat wagon, pretty much. And a, w- a ambulance. A ambulance, wham, and um, yeah, whammy, and um, uh, then what? Well, yeah, like, so then I, I started to feel like a little bit of pain, and just said, "Hey, like." They started to drive down the road, and literally, I thought they were driving the Fink track here in Australia, and I was just like, "What the hell are you guys doing? Where am I going?" And I just asked for a bit of pain relief, a bit of painkillers, jabbed me in the arm, and then, yeah, like I say, I woke up the next day and the surgery was done. So, Fuck. Yeah, exactly that word. I've yeah, <laughs> got no idea on any of so it. So you remember being in the ambulance yeah. super quickly and yeah. then going, oi, I'm pretty sore. Yeah. And then next day, surgery. So you had no control over the surgery, that no is- like consent forms, nothing, just wake up metals in your leg massive scar and you have no fucking idea where you are pretty much to my knowledge i don't remember the, any like giving consent to not like it i, I probably, maybe you did maybe i did i don't know i've got on the screen <laughs> the fucking meek meal deal is crazy that he's now looking at a two to four year jail sentence for violating his probation so i pulled it up because you you've been close with meek meal for like years yeah so Dude, that what what's going on with that shit? Well, it's kind of funny because actually the last post on my uh, on my Instagram right mm. now is a shot of me and him. The first one of the first times I took him and his boys on dirt because obviously they ripped the bike life yeah. in the street. And I, I guess here's my thing: is like life is so controversial. Everyone wants to attack for every every different little thing. But I got to know these guys really well. Yeah. Um, Coon Philly, O'Malley, Talk. Uh, Chino was like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. I mean, like James Stewart and, and everyone at uh, Twitch will be like, dude, can't touch what you do on a wheelie, how you sway that thing, oh, do that little yeah. swagger on the back end with a hand, you know, the whole deal. But <clears throat> it's so crazy. This thing's blowing up. Cause when we started Meek, Meek was been on probation since he was like, I think yeah. 18, 17. And his probation officer had such an, and she, she just like wanted, a vendetta, like, like example. Okay. Give us your whole schedule. He'd give the whole schedule to to his probation officer. They, he'd be like, okay, I'm going to be in San Diego. If he broke his probation, that basically, of course, he could go back to jail. Yeah. Literally, they I believe it was a she, had the whole schedule. And then it would be like, be to, be to Philly within three hours. He's like, you have my schedule. You know, you know the that physics I'm not even this, here. Right? I can't be there. So it was like. The one thing that I saw multiple times was like, he couldn't even live his life. Yes, he made a crime. Yeah. Yes, he did something wrong. I'm sure we're all innocent, right? We've never done anything. Yeah. You know, but it's like the judging and the craziness. But his probation officer, of course, when you see a guy that's worked hard, that came from getting shot at to all of a sudden, cr- you know, creating this crazy energy, finding his zone with the whole music, the bike life, the whole deal. And he's yeah. making money. He's flying on jets. He's doing his thing. That's a target. Jealousy, right? Yeah, yeah. And so anyways, that's the original one. So where my, where my opinion comes from, and all this stuff happening is that 
I watched how bad he suffered with the probation officer. Finally got a, another, a, a new probation officer. What, what happens then? He's dating other big names. Yeah. He's going through all this crazy stuff. He's blowing up and everything's going great. Got in a little controversy with, uh, you know, some other, you know, some artists and stuff, but he was doing his thing. And then you hear the thing about the judge saying, Hey, you give me a shout out. Basically give me a shout yeah, out on a, on a boys. Hey, give me a shout out on a boys to men. Literally like at the time he was dating Nicki Minaj and said, Hey, give me a shot. And he's like, and he's dude, he's, Nick is just, Meek is just humble. Yeah. I mean, the guys are just riding smaller and smaller boards and fully doing turns and, and like stuff. taking off under the lip basically. <laughs> I, know. Like. I know it's crazy. I think one day there will be like, there won't even be like a, a big wave world tour and a world tour. They'll you know? just start going there has to, all to be. Like yeah. how can there, how can you say you're of, you're the world's best surfer at surfing waves under like 10 foot, you know, like, or unless you're John John. Yeah, exactly. And he's you, like the first dude that is like and the world champion. He's like bridging the gap between that, you know, yeah. like what the Eddie, what is it? Yeah. Like he won, the, he won the Eddie. Yeah. He won, well, did he win pipe this year? Oh, no, he hasn't won pipe. No, that's right. Well, he's yeah, won the, <laughs> he's won the, um, has he won like Triple the Vulcan Pro or oh, something yeah. there? Like, or he's won <laughs> I nothing I should know there. this. Yeah, I should I as well. But he's world champ. He won the Eddie. He, he ripped a pipe Jaws. anyway. He was out at Jaws like on that other swell. Like it's just, he's bridging the gap and I just feel like... Because the dude sh- like Philippe Toledo ain't going to paddle out at Jaws. Well, you know? I mean, we don't know, but I think he went out at YMAO like uh, the other day. I saw something maybe. But um, yeah. yeah that's I, interesting you say that, that yeah, you think that there will be a point where there's no like, it'll just be, you'll just go to those spots as a part of the tour. Yeah. I mean, like you look at guys like Kyle Lenning is like starting to do calves on the faces out yeah. there and like... It's just, I think there has to be a point where that happens because it's, I even look at, I don't know, I've always thought this, but like, it's like, how can you say you're the best if you're not doing all of it? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's just my opinion, but. Maybe they could have like a, like a uh, triple crown within the, so you got three events of the world big wave and then three events of the world tour. And then if you end up winning a combined points total of that, then you there's another thing that you win. Yeah, yeah, Because that yeah. could be pretty cool. Because, like, some dudes, man, like, yeah, I, I don't know if Medina's going to go out there. I don't know if, like, yeah. Toledo would go out. <laughs> I, and mean, like, I mean, they might, but... I spoke to Mick after, and he's like, mate, you're crazy. You're crazy. No, I'd never go. And I'm like, yeah, you would. You're just saying that, but you would. I was just struggling. I was in, by myself with... It was just me and Lindsay in the house, and I was sitting there thinking, and... Said, Linz, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I can't do this. And said, Roxon's gonna beat me. Eli's gonna whoop me. Uh, I'm gonna get smoked. You know, at this rate, I'm, I'm just mentally not there. I'm, I'm scared. You know, I don't like this. You know, and I just didn't. I didn't like that. I wasn't. I was like that. Mm-hmm. And I think she didn't like it either, knowing how you have to be in it. So I was like, all right, I mustered up again. Eldon comes over. I told him, I think I'm done. He's like, let's just give it to after Supercross. Let's let's see where you are there. And I was like, all right, yeah, okay. It was uh, mentally tough that season, but when I was sitting at uh, Las Vegas, I, I uh, the team sat me down the second to last round, which was New Jersey, and said, hey, you can take the outdoors off, and uh, we won't cut your pay. You can also do all of next year. We'll pay you the same to do Supercross only. Um, I was like, man, that's, wow, what a, what a con. Nobody's ever been offered that. That's, that's, mm. That'd be amazing. That's a, that's a great uh, deal there how can you not take that Ryan you know and but it was just like if I knew that if I took it it was going to be because the money not because I wanted to do it yeah and that I was already at that mental what I was facing a year prior and after that race we won that race that night and I was going into Vegas and that was a tough week just it's all on the line here we are you know you're trying to say this doesn't mean everything yet it's like but we have to win tonight you know (laughs) so anyway I just remember that day I said I I in a, in a good way of with that, I just said, I never want to feel this way again. You know, just that racing, that risk, that nervousness that I don't have it in me anymore to do this anymore longer past this. And so I said, then that, that I think me knowing that gave me the motivation to push through that night. And thankfully we got the job done. And I knew that day, that day, that middle of that day, I said, this is it. You knew I told that was Lin- your last race. I told Lindsay, this is it. And uh-huh. I, not to drag things out a little longer, but, the last day, the last day I was practicing, uh, go, getting ready for Vegas in Florida. This was Wednesday. I was in my last moto. I had 10 laps to go in a 20-lap um, uh, 
moto. So I, I was on my last 10 laps and I come through this rhythm section and, you know, dirt bikes make, you know, it's a race bike. Dirt bikes may have malfunctions, you know, they just, they just do. We all sooner or later. And I, I, I will say that I have never had a mechanical failure the whole time I've been with KTM, thankfully. But that day I come through a rhythm section. I'm fully committed. I'm in the last pocket to ready to triple out and I've got a lot of speed you know, you soak it up. So you're all your weights forward. And dude, that bike just had not, I went to twist the throttle. There's nothing there. And here I am. The con the ground is harder than concrete. It's clay. It's like, gosh, and I'm in the air flying through it, bailing off the bike. I'm thinking, is this real life right now? This, this isn't happening to me right now. You know, it's like one of those things. This <laughs> Wednesday is, before the final. This oh. is not happening. Um, it, it, it was just so like, I don't know if you've had that moment, but no, I've never been 30 <laughs> feet up in the air and had a bike die on so me. So you're, yeah. <laughs> So, Thank God. you know, and thankfully I, I, it scrubbed my speed a little bit. So I bailed off and I kind of landed down the downside and kind of, I didn't even have a chance to run. I won two foot and I slammed the ground, but I got up and I'm like, gosh, am I okay? Am I all right? And thinking Vegas in my head, I'm like, am I hurt? No, everything's good. And, um, you were fine. I was fine. But I, and I was, I was walking to the shop, you know, my visors busted off. The bike was mangled, done. And I said, this is it. I, no more. That's it. So, you so I think so you my mind was Thursday. made up Wednesday. So you didn't uh -huh. ride the Thursday, well, we, Friday. We flew out Thursday to go to press. So that was the last time you rode a bike before <laughs> yeah. Vegas Supercross. And yeah. you Actually, he wasn't it. even riding the bike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So that, and then, yeah, yeah. last uh, <laughs> retirement looming. Dude. Last time you've got a bike or put a pair of boots that on. That was a head case, man. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's no... It's no um, hidden secret but you are your thoughts right so whatever you focus on you become and i'm i feel like i'm proof of that you know i could have focused on whatever else and, and probably been locked up now but uh it's um you 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 definitely become your thoughts so if you focus on on that voice in your head that's talking negative to yourself and you're just allowing that to always speak negative and you're speaking negative to yourself all, all day well guess what you're probably going to stay pretty negative and you're going to get to a place where you're going to feel pretty dark and lonely and and probably think poor me and, and make excuses of why things couldn't have been different but or you can be like i'm going to shut this voice up i'm going to you know, it's all a decision you make you're like i want to smile today yeah i agree with that and uh and you know even i've had friends come to me that i'm like what's going on man like i can tell you're upset you know and i've had buddies cry on my shoulder and i've taken them up on my wing and i've done stuff all i can for them and and i've seen them be so depressed and i'm like all right you know it's awkward to have that especially these guys you know with 30 year old males it's hard to like but well there's a all, picture that gets painted of masculinity yeah and, and people you, are afraid you, to you don't want to let that down yeah but at the end of the day i mean we're, we're at a time and time and place where we have to be open about it. like there's stuff going on you know with suicide prevention my buddy um sam from up the coast he does this thing called save a mate which i think is awesome and he's gonna he, he rides his pit bike from brisbane to melbourne to raise awareness for suicide prevention and uh and, and, it's, and it's, 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 i'll get it out in a minute specifically, specifically. for males yeah uh, because of the masculinity thing they don't want to talk about it and especially out here in the aussie culture everyone's big and belly Dude, and the got graph, beards i was just looking <laughs> <laughs> but this guy was a he was an older man um i want to say older he was only in the sort of early 50s to mid 50s um had a family I still remember it walked into his house he he um he he, he had Went to the doctor with a just a, a stomach sort of, you just felt unwell. Um, hard worker, you know, um, a family as, as I mentioned, and the, the doctor sort of had gave him a test and and pretty much said, you know, you've got X amount of time to live. So obviously, a big shock in their their world. He come home um, and and did the treatments, etc. I went and seen him. Um, well, I got sort of reached out to and, and thought, yeah, absolutely. I went and seen him and I still remember, I walked in the front door, it was a little four bedroom house, um, walked in the front door, they'd moved the bed out to the TV because he used to like to watch yeah. the TV, didn't have a TV in the room. He was sitting on the TV, all the family were there, there was Broncos paraphernalia everywhere, there was Maroon stuff and he was sitting there on his couch. He didn't know we were coming. Was myself and, and a staff member went and he didn't know I was coming and um, because if he knew, he would have been embarrassed, which is what the daughter had said to me. Yeah. I turned up, would have had a, a, you know, a little conversation, but sometimes we, uh, I was there for about, I don't know, 45 minutes and um, 
just sat there and he knew I was there. I'd ask him a few questions. He'd give me a couple of cheeky replies. But that moment for me was really special in the sense that he's a young man or in terms of life. Yeah. Um, yeah, early 50s. Um, he was there was no turning back for him and his family were there and he was a you know, Broncos fan. But for me to, to be able to do that for him was so special and I felt so good afterwards but put everything into perspective as well. When you think, you know, when you think you got, you're doing it tough and you think, yeah. you know, you just go, hang on a minute. Like there's people out there that are doing a lot worse than, than what I am. And um, that, was a, that was a really sort of uh, good reality check in terms of, life really um you know if everyone stood in the, everyone in the world stood in the corner uh, in a circle and put their problems in you'd pull your yours out that quick it wasn't funny how much confidence does that because being a professional athlete is about getting on a roll being on top of your own game mentally yeah how much did that do for you mentally to be like a year later do the thing that you said you were going to do on the lowest day of your life which was tearing your acl yeah yeah like that's got to be pretty gnarly dude yeah yeah it was definitely like a crazy start to the year and like after such a like a whirlwind of emotions and like dealing with like how to overcome injury and all that stuff it was just cool to like come back and do yeah exactly what you just said like on like the shittiest day that i've had in my whole wakeboard career come back and do that first trick was like insane when you so like you just said the shittiest day in my wakeboard career well, actually, let's talk about how, like, that day that, like, I did that or whatever. I would say that, but it was, like, the, it was, like, so cool to come back from that injury, I don't know, and, like, do that. But, like, that was the day that, like, my little brother nearly died. So, it went from, like, being, like, so good to, like, the shittiest day of my wakeboard career again, like, straight back into that. What happened with your brother? I didn't know that that was a thing. Oh, you didn't know that was a thing? No. Well, he got, like, really sick and his kidneys... Um, like he has a disease in his kidneys and they can't like process protein. So like he got put on to all these crazy medications and stuff like that. And it actually like the medications like sent him into having seizures and he was driving his car and had a seizure. I did. He yeah. crashed his car and then like they took him to ICU and he like, they couldn't stop him seizuring for like a day and a half. And this is all like while I was at my first competition back. So, and like every, it all got like sort of kept from me. I didn't get told any of this until like, the second my final ride got done, like dad called me and was like, Harley, I got to tell you something. And then like told me that whole story. And it was just like, that was pretty emotional. So it went from like, I don't know, being like such a good day to like the fucking worst day ever. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. So like you said the worst day of my wakeboarding career. And then I wanted, I was going to ask, how does that relate to your life? So like, what would, well, yeah, you know what I mean? That was the worst day of my life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's so the, but the worst day of your life isn't because of wakeboarding. It's because of something that is like related to your family. So yeah, I think yeah. that a lot of people, again, like what we said before about Harley versus Harley Clifford, it's yeah. like people would think that the worst thing that could ever happen to you is your knee blowing out in a comp run. But in reality, like that's, it, like where does that rate in, with your brother getting oh, sick like you know nothing. what i mean like i yeah i couldn't give a damn about my acl like when it comes down to stuff like that you know and so like was that um because i know with me getting sick last year yeah because it was a kidney thing as well uh-huh. it put my life into perspective a little bit of yeah. like uh, it honestly changed me i was just talking to my mate today about it like I'll literally call my friends and be like, fuck, I love you, dude. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, it yeah. kind of, it turned me in, like, it, I guess it just changed the way I looked at people. It, like, made me feel like shit was yeah. way more temporary. So, yeah, like, with you going through that, it's like, it just, sh- it gives you a different perspective on, like, what's important and, like, oh, yeah, where sure. wakeboarding yeah. really ranks in the grand scheme of your life. Yeah, it's like nothing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And especially, like, like you said, you did that, but I've noticed my whole family's like that now. Like everyone, like is always like hanging up the phone, love you and stuff like that. Where before, it, like wasn't like that. And that's sort of like, yeah, we've all sort of like realized the same thing that like anything can happen any given day. Like a month before that happened, like Ethan was fine. Like he was out partying, drinking, doing whatever he wants, having fun. We're wakeboarding every day, and then all of a sudden, within like a month, he just got sick, and then that was it. Like and yeah, you know. What's something that you never got asked, and never you know because i guess the like we were sort of saying the media almost baits answers 
that they want to fill a headline or that they want to fill a story or fit into the narrative of the sport because you guys end up being a part of a bigger picture. You end up being a part of baseball. You end up being a part of motocross. Mm -hmm. But on that level, you guys are individuals and you're going through different things. So with you, I guess, what would be something that you never got asked that you really wish somebody would ask you or you would have liked to have had a chance to kind of to kind of go into yeah i don't know that it would have been a specific question that somebody would ask but i I think i wish i would have said more often and reiterated to the media which can be um can be intimidating especially when you have a boss you're playing with teammates you're playing for somebody for a city is to is to kind of get across that baseball isn't everything you know, and you yeah. don't, and, and so many times after a game in an interview, you don't necessarily lie, but you just kind of maybe make it out like you care more than you do because you're supposed to. You know, I'm supposed yeah. to be upset because I left a bunch of guys on base and we lost the game or whatever, which you are, but deep down, uh, especially the older I got, I'm, I, I, I would think more, man, there's way more important yeah. things going on in this world than – than this baseball game um and i remember saying at one time i made an error and cost us the game or something and one of the media guys was like well tell us about the play that you you know where you booted the ball and i said yeah it was it was you know i should have had it would have saved the game i said but you know reality is and i had just gone to walter reed that morning which is our, our military hospital in dc i was playing with the nationals when i was there for four years and got to spend a lot of time at walter reed and i'd gone in there that morning and happened to meet uh, a couple of kids, like 18, 19 year old kids that had both their legs blown off. And one of them was sitting in there with his fiance. Uh, I think the other one had his parents in there. And just sitting and talking and hearing their story made baseball feel like the most unimportant thing on the planet. Go out that night, kick a ball, you know, whatever. And I, and I did, I told the media, I'm like, you know what? It, it Absolutely, it's upsetting. It, it hurts the team. I'm not happy about it, but let me tell you what I did this morning and what I saw and, and they took it well. Um, I mean, how can you not? So, so probably just to tell them Mm -hmm. like, I love this game, but this ain't the most important thing, you know, going on in in my world, our world life right now. So what stage was it that you had that crash? Um, I think it was stage, uh, stage seven, I think. So, Stage six or seven, had one little get off there and um, basically, yeah, it was just uh, like in some soft sand and soft like dunes and everything and um, kind of just dropped off this little bank and it, um, yeah, basically picked me up and put me on on my stomach and went, yeah, surfing on my stomach a little bit. Mate, I would have shit myself if I'd have crashed like that at Dakar. Oh, mate, I would have shit myself too, and I literally did. So that's the worst. Yes, but yes. Yeah, um, probably, yeah, not, not Tell too. Tell the people about your bloody oh, shitty mate. crash. Mate, it's amazing. It was a shitty crash. It was a shitty crash, literally. It's, um, yeah, like I say, it picked me up, basically uh, sat me on my stomach, and then um, uh, the bike basically chased me down, smacked me in the back, and um, burst my camel back until I was drenched, and then um, just... I don't know, it just hit me in a really good point somewhere in my back that I hope I never find again, and it just popped a little piece out, and um, <laughs> yeah, I actually had to sit and... Are we talking like solid, or mm, are we talking not super li- solid? Not not, not super solid, so it was like, it was, uh, once I got back on the bike, I, I once it hit me in the back, I was like, I think I'm winded a little bit, and I'm like, well, I think I may have may have just shit myself a little bit as well and i'm like no 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 it's all good it's all good so climb back on the bike and basically as soon as i sit on the seat i'm like yeah oh, yep no i've definitely uh, <laughs> definitely soiled my jocks so it's uh yep and i look at the road book and go yep got another 190 kilometers of that to go so i uh yeah i'm in for a great afternoon so um basically still finish the stage and uh pull up next to my team and my crew and they go yeah hey hey good job well done it's good to see you here and how was your day i said um it was okay, but I shit myself. I already know it's 10 o'clock at night, 10.30. This is going to escalate. Once That's again, cool. Ellis Mania, very peaceful. Another Another Australian. very peaceful <laughs> boxing match. Strong. Ellis. Ellis Mania, strong. So you see where we're going with this. You can start multiplying, dividing, whatever you want to do from this point on. I'm about nine vodka, sodas down. I'm a little guy, so I'm feeling nice. I get to the circle bar from our meal. First guy who hits me in the shoulder is Jackson, grabs me, picks me up. I'm like, okay, it's on. We're doing this. We're going. Do you still have sleeves? 
Yeah, still have sleeves by this okay, point. Okay. So he's mellow. Like Jackson's on a mellow one right now. Tom Robb, I'm sure you know Tom Robinson. He's we're all on a mellow one. Ryan Hagee, we're all on a mellow one. We work our way to Ellis Mania. Rich, we you know kind of cruise in. Luckily, we get credentials. We go sit next to Jason, watch the match. Everything's going down. We're just sipping on drinks. Everything's mellow. We get the call. Okay, you're going to Dre's nightclub, the Monster Party. Where are you? Everyone's texting. Where are you guys? Where are you guys? Yeah, I can, I can feel it. So you know it's it's coming. So we get in the taxis on our way there. I'm fucked up for sure. <laughs> like, let's just cut to the chase. I'm fucked up. So we're all getting there. We get out of the car. Blacked out before the party. That's my dog no, right there. But I'm not. So blacked out to me is blacked out. Uh, like you're blacked the fuck out. Maybe speaking Spanglish. Probably a little bit. Just but like, so we get there. Blacked out's like the torch where you like shine and the, the, <laughs> just fucking black. Like this the is, eyes are black. Yeah, exactly. This is where stuff starts really starting to get sideways for me. I get out of the taxi. We go in, get our passes, everything, see the boys. I realize I don't have my cell phone on me. Fuck, I left it in the taxi. Put the, get Jackson's phone, put, no, no, put the emergency on. I can hear it. I hear my phone when I walk out to the valet. Dude's holding my phone out. I'm like, oh my God, it's a godsend. Like, there's blessing in disguise. Let's party. <laughs> okay, that's the green light. That's the green light. Phone. Let's go. You We're... lose your phone for five minutes and then find it. It's almost like you just won the jackpot. <laughs> oh, no, dude. legitimately. Like, I was like, okay, that happened for a reason. That means I need to go drink more. Send it. It's time to go. Run in. Obviously, I'm on a high because I'm seeing people I haven't seen in like five to seven years. Motocross industry is my family. It's my family. Like, no matter what, you can cut it any way, shape, or form. Everyone I'm attached to. I see people, I get excited. I'm drinking with them, bouncing around, high fives, jump on people's shoulders, stealing hats, whatever, walk around the corner, see my boys from ESPN, handle Jack Daniels. Ooh. That's where shit gets literally, the black screen goes off. Yeah. Don't remember anything, nothing. So then there's like a six hour window. There's about a six hour window where I just go, beep, wake up, IVs Aww. in each arm. Don't know what, you know, obviously I got half of a wallet sitting next to me, a cell phone that has 2% battery on it. I just pull the IVs out, walk out, and all I hear is the nurse go, he's up. And then he rocks up on my side of my card of my payment and says, hey, excuse me, can you uh, check my blood pressure? It's like, <laughs> fuck me, like, um, I'm here, like, uh, my leg cut off. They just said you were good. And I was like, well, shit, I need some stuff done. We're already here. Like, why do two trips? Like, oh, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. this why is... Why do two trips? Yeah. I was going to say, this, money again. this is the... I knew you'd Tied say ups. it. Is, this is the Gypsy Tales podcast. Is that your favorite Gypsy moment of all time? Me asking... So, let's, let's lay it out. I just had three kidney surgeries, and the big worry was my blood pressure, and mum was going... Go and get your blood pressure check. Go and get your blood pressure. So he I was got like, his violin out and he's playing, no, I just said, I just saw it up at you. I saw the machine and I went, "Look out! Here we go. This will shut mum up." And uh, on on Toby's dime, mate, got me blood pressure check. There's that many stories of you just being the yeah, ultimate gypsy. The ultimate gypsy of just that's why I got the clinging, Gypsy Tales podcast. Just clinging on to anything and whatever's there, and that's it. Yeah. Now, now in a freaking podcast with you. Makes it work, but G- yeah, Gypsy Tales, that, that is a good Gypsy Tale. I was like, oh, Toby's going to keep his leg. He's going to be out of race. Oh, he's safe? Okay, well, check okay, my cool. blood pressure. Now, so, uh, yeah, now, now I, I need a bit of help. Yeah, now let's just see if the kidney's working. 